and welcome back to my favorite vlog in the works. Now, Matt and I have been taking quite a break last couple of weeks, family problems, health problems, so on and so forth, and we took a somewhat of a repose from working on Scalagrim's project and continue working on projects we have for Blade Show. Now, many of you have been asking about the steels we prefer for blades, so on and so forth. Now, steel selection for a blade maker is a very intimate and delicate process. The reason is, everybody has their own pet peeves and, at the same time, everybody has their own style which requires a specific selection, especially for things like Damascus or performance knives. When selecting materials for Damascus blades or Damascus projects, the key is to select two or more different kinds of steels, like, for example, this Damascus sax knife. Now, the bright steel that you see is 15M20, which has approximately 2% nickel. Nickel is corrosion resistant in acids and it etches white. While the background, the black stuff, is 1095. The general rule is that unless you have steels that are, have high nickel or high chrome, uh, the higher the carbon or the high manganese, either one, will etch darker. So the same steel, 1045, will etch lighter than 1095, even though the, all the additives are the same. However, the carbon content is higher. Now, once you start adding weird stuff like nickel, chrome, uh, wolfram, or tungsten, uh, the etching color will change. For example, I noticed that higher tungsten content steels tend to look somewhat tend to look somewhat greenish in the edge compared to when welded side by side to 1095. Now, there's a lot of free play because of that in selecting the steels for your Damascus billet depending on the desired end result. However, I personally don't like having more than three types of steel in my Damascus billet specifically because a lot of the colors will get lost. And most of the times you will do very well with just two 15 and 20 and any 10 series. Now, in my personal projects, I would love to use Hitachi Blue ADCRV in other fairly exotic steels, but that are not too complicated in the process of heat treating. However, Hitachi Blue is expensive, ADCRV has a relatively limited performance potential, especially in Damascus, and the selection for steel is a very, very long process. Fortunately enough, recently I got a special package. This is a bar of magic steel. Uh, I ordered it specifically from Russia. This is U16 or U16. Now, the specific uh, carbon content of this steel is 1.6% carbon. So we're getting fairly close to cast iron. Remember, cast iron starts with a carbon content of 2.1 or 2.2% carbon. This steel is fairly abrasion resistant, but since it has a lot of carbon, it can be used as a carbon spike in Damascus projects. Remember, when you're making fairly complex Damascus pattern, you will encounter carbon loss. So, if for example you start with steels like W2, which has a range from 0.75 to about 1% uh, carbon, it's a wide range depending on the specs, or ADCRV, which has 0.8% carbon, and you're making a complex billet that encounters a lot of heat cycles, you will eventually lose a lot of carbon. So you will need a carbon spike steel to add into your billet to compensate for that loss. And that's why I got this. Today I'm going to try forging it because not all steels like behaving at certain temperatures very well. I will also try heat treating samples of it, one in water, one in oil, and test them at their full hardness without tempering, look at the grain, so on and so forth. So this is the first time I'm working with this, uh, so bear with me. Now, the reason why I specifically also got this, not only is a carbon spike in my Damascus billet, I want to try a super high carbon edge on a complex billeted knife. For example, if you get somewhere else axes, you have a Damascus billet, multi-bar, but the edge is mono steel. I used to use either ADCRV or W1, now I'm going to try using some of this.
cut it. Now that I got my two sample pieces, I'm going to test them by quenching one in oil and the other one in water. Then I'm going to try to break them and look at the grain structure and the ease with which they break or don't break. Let this one cool off. this one off a bit. First up is the water quenched piece. It's expected to break much easier as quenched pieces in water tend to be harder and more brittle. I'm going to clamp it in the vise and use the good old trusty hammer to break it. The piece might go flying that way, or that way, or that way. So wear glasses and uh, don't do it at home. Let's try to make it not come at me. That'd be good. Okay, that's fine. We only have one camera. Okay, let me turn it this way. We only have one camera, bro. Alright. Like so. Let's do it. First, this might or might not break it. Okay, it doesn't. So it's pretty good. Ready? Oh, there it is. What we can tell from this is that the grain and water is pretty good. And I don't see any cracks on the inside going. So potentially this is water quenchable steel, which will definitely be good for gravers. All right, next up is the oil quenched piece. Now, this was a very large cross section and I did not preheat my oil. So it's very possible that this is a shallow hardening steel, meaning that this bar has a hamon and will be fairly hard to break. So, let's check it. I think you can do it. We'll see about it. You have a really big hammer. Okay. Again, it doesn't break like that. So... Ah. Well, I'm not gonna look for that one. But, this is the grain in oil. Ha, huh, this is curious actually. So I don't know if you can see it. This is very likely a type of steel that will give a good hamon. The reason why I know it, first of all, the grain size is perfect. But in the middle, you have this gray area where the grain tends to be more eh, gnarly. Well, from the shape of this area and the color of the steel around it, I can tell that the area in the center didn't get as hard as the stuff around the corners. Compare it to our water quenched piece. The grain is uniform here, here it isn't. Meaning 
If I use this steel for kitchen knives that need a hamon or hunting knives that need a hamon, this will be the perfect selection. One good way to test your steels is to spark test it. That is, you turn on your grinder, you make sure that your grit is stable across the pieces you're sampling, and you look at the shape and the color of the spark. The higher the carbon, the more like a fir tree the spark will be. You will have a line, and then you'll have branches that explode as stars, and sometimes you'll even have sparks going the other direction. That you'll notice it once you start doing it. Now, I have my pieces to test. This is the water quench sample. This is the oil quench sample. Hardened pieces test differently. And as my control, I have a piece of W1. This specific W1 is supposed to have 1% carbon. Remember, steel specs for W1 and W series can range between 0.75 carbon and 1%. So it very much depends which mill or which supplier you get your steel from. When you get it, make sure that you get a spec sheet printed out that indicates the carbon content and other alloying elements. I will test them in the following order. First will be the W1, then the oil quenched piece, then W1 again, and then the water quenched piece. Well, what we have concluded today is that I'm all set to make my special blades. Now, what I know about the steel I got is it's very forgeable. It is supposed to be weldable, as so the supplier told me, uh, in terms of forge welding for Damascus. I know that it makes hamones, so it will make great mono steel knives if you want some artistic flair to it. I know it quenches in water and doesn't tend to crack, which is good for my engraving prospects as well as it has a lot of carbon. So I can either do the following, use it as the carbon donor steel in complex Damascus billets, or use it, if it works out, as my super hard edge on something like a saber or a knife, while the rest of the blade is made out of something more modest. Thanks for watching this episode of In The Works and joining us on our R&D journey of discovering new, special, magical Slavic steel. Be sure to check out our brand new merch in the link bar below the video. And as always, thanks for watching, like the video, and don't forget to subscribe. Catch you next time.